Hey y'all, happy Mask Monday. Today we're gonna do another quick tip. Today I'm gonna do something I actually haven't done in a long time, which is uh, I'm gonna make a sculpting tool. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to make like my kind of my favorite like sculpting tool that I've at least made you know like, like there's I have a lot of tools here some of them I've made and some of them I've just bought um, so I'll kind of show you the main ones that I like to use um, and then uh, I'll show you kind of how to make um, one that I use a lot that I think is really useful that isn't really something that you can buy in a store um, and it's pretty cheap and easy to make there are these big rakes so these are for like uh, your big like primary forms and smoothing, um, you know, getting stuff out. So these big rakes I'll use a lot. Um, this is a really, this one's a really good tip. This is made by CES. Um, and this is what kind of inspired the kind of tool that I'm gonna make today. Um, so I'll kind of keep that one out for like reference on like sizing and stuff like that. So these are rakes that I'm not gonna make one of these today, um, but uh, this one I think I bought from Ken's Tools, and this one uh, I made. It works almost the same. Obviously, this one is prettier though, but this one works just, you know, just as good. So again, these are rakes. So like these are these are really really big rakes, and then these are a lot finer. So like kind of like primary form shaping, secondary form shaping. You can do a lot of detail work with these two. Let's see, uh, these I really love. I love the wooden ends of these and then they have these big loops. So you get that like triangular one and that more circular one. Uh, these are Kemper tools. This is a really small version of that. This is kind of famously called the Rick Baker tool by a lot of people um, because of, there's a picture um, of him using this on his like infamous troll sculpture. What's inconsistent with these is the shape you get on the back of this. Um, so sometimes it'll be thicker, sometimes it'll be thinner, but that's something you could easily go in and just sand uh, to your liking. Uh, the shape of that. This is a kidney rake. That's really good for smoothing down surfaces, especially when you're first starting out with the primary forms. And so this tool right here is kind of what we're gonna make today. Uh, very similar to this anyway, so it'll be a little bit different. Um, I haven't really seen a company that sells anything exactly like this. These are like shapes and stuff I pre-made. So this is all like from the twisted brass, but I'm gonna show you the process of twisting it. So if I wanted to make something new, I'd probably just go into there and grab one of these. This is a really cool tool. This is a jewelry crimping tool. So you see there's like those little grooves in there. So you'll like put it in there. And yeah, so again, you can get that like a Hobby Lobby or whatever. This is like needle nose pliers basically, but they're rounded, they're smooth. So you can use that to bend stuff or to just grab it in a certain way without like damaging it. Clippers, wire clippers or whatever some small needle nose pliers and you can see I put like some grip tape. Those are the kind of basic tools that I'll be using. What you're gonna need is some brass tubing. So this is again circular brass tubing. You can also find this at hobby stores or online. So here's a bunch of different gauge guitar string um, and bass string. This is a K&S, just like brass tube cutter or whatever. Uh, and that's what we're gonna use to cut the brass tubing. So now I'm gonna need to choose what material I wanna twist. Um, I've already got this pre-twisted stuff and I recommend you know twisting it a good amount. It makes it stronger but then you get more grooves. This is cool because you can really shape it and bend it very easily. So like if I want to get like a square bend off of this, I'll put it right there on the thick side and I can just very easily just bend that into like a square. So now, because this stuff is bendable, what, we, what you can do before you put it in the drill is just kind of pre-twist it together a little bit. I'm gonna put this in the drill. You know, that's a decent uh, coil or whatever, but uh, I want it to be a little bit tighter. And again, that's just two pieces of wire twisted together with the drill. And again, because of the kind of bendability of this stuff, it's not super stiff. It's gonna be easy for me to bend the shape that I want. Okay, now I want to bend this in basically. I'm gonna bend that right about there. 
Then that right about there. So now I've got that end. So that's a possible end. That might be a little bit bigger than I want it to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and make another one that's kind of the size of this. It's still a little bit bigger than this one. So that's kind of, I think, more what I was going for was that one. So we'll go with that. I need to figure out if I can fit it into this brass tubing. And so it's gonna end up pretty much being like that. So that's good. I like that size. That's good for now. Let's see what this one looks like. Yeah, so that's pretty big. It's a lot of give to that. But you know, I can squeeze this and just keep kind of forcing each side in there and maybe even end up with something interesting. Like, see now I'm getting a little bit of that shape because I'm pushing in this side more. So now I've got like a, kind of a nice little triangular shape. If I wanted to do a circular version, I can get these, these guys and do the same kind of bending technique. So now I've got like a little circular thing and I can make that thing bigger just by doing that. And that can just be shoved into here as well. You know, just as easily you get, you know, a circular loop kind of shape. Now I also need to make the guitar string end. Just the more you throw it in there, the smaller it'll be. So now we have to cut the tube. And um, you already have one side, so you just gotta cut one. You gotta kinda decide where you want it. So I might just give myself like a little, little line. Yeah, I think that that's a good size. Okay, so this thing's weird. Uh, loosen it up enough to fit that in there. Like a circular like pizza blade in there. Um, and you're gonna, you know, I'm just gonna line that up with the mark that I already made. Doesn't have to be exact. Okay, so you're gonna tighten it down basically to where it's, you know, holding it. And I'm gonna tighten it a little bit more. And you don't wanna over tighten. You're gonna start, you're gonna spin this around and then you're gonna tighten it some more and then spin it some more. Eventually it's just gonna pop off. But yeah, it's just spinning. Once you feel it starting to get loose, like it's easy to spin, tighten it a little bit. So yeah, it just pops off. So now you can save that for later and that's gonna be the size of my sculpting tool plus the, the ends. So just to kind of test, I'm just gonna kind of throw them in there. See how I feel about them. So. That's about how it's gonna look. I'll show you uh, how we get them to stay in there now. I'm gonna do an initial kind of crimp with uh, the needle nose pliers with the tape on it. And I'm just gonna kind of squeeze it down, flatten it out a little bit. Now, what you're gonna wanna do is use these crimping, uh, this crimping tool. This right here, would probably be enough to where you can use this, but we're gonna go the extra measure of um, putting some five minute epoxy in there and gluing it in. And uh, so like I said, at this point, you can probably start sculpting with it, but you might end up yanking them out and having to, you know, do it again or whatever, so. You know, I'm poking it down in as far as I can go. But then once I kind of feel like I've gotten that, I'm gonna go around the edges here. Yep, you're pretty much good at this point to just kind of set it somewhere to let that epoxy pop all the way off and a few minutes you're good to go. But um, that'll do it. Uh, thanks for joining us for Mask Monday. Like, share, subscribe, visit us at nightmaretoys.com and I'll see you next week for maybe another quick tip.